Next on the agenda, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is the uh, M Payment uh, panel. It's going to be moderated by Laurent, who is the CEO and co-founder of uh, Toro. He's got several priced uh, deployments in NFC in uh, marketing, transportation. Please welcome the panelists on board. So, please come join me. I feel a little lonely here. Good morning, everyone. So today's um, roundtable is about mobile payments and payments. Um, it's about M payments, which is, uh, you hear me? Yeah. Which is um, a quite complex topic. Um, and what we're going to try to do today is try to um, put onto the table some, some concept and try to clarify a little bit if we can. My name is Laurent Renard. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Toro, a um, company based in Taiwan and Barcelona, providing a mobile wallet to the, uh, to the industry, to the ecosystem. We have here Joan Gonzalez from um, SetPay, so he will explain what he's doing. We have Jonathan Hyde from um, Dinube, Paul Navarro from Bank Sabadell, and uh, Florian Brem from Buse. Buse, Buse. Perfect. So, um, to try to, 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 uh, to explain a little bit the world of mobile payments, we will um, focus the, um, the roundtable on three, uh, three main topics. One first topic is um, Paul Davaro, who will explain um, the different types of payments uh, that you can find on, 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 uh, on the phone. Um, obviously, you need to get some money in your applications if you want to do a, a service, and some money out of your application. Um, this is some, there is already some complexity because there are some closed loop systems versus open loop systems. Paul will explain us that. Um, another topic that's very interesting because if we have entrepreneurs here, we see a lot of things happening in the States and we try to do things um, in other parts of the world, Europe or Asia, and there can be some conflicting um, concepts because there are different regulations between uh, Europe and, and, and the US, for example, and Florian will talk about that. Um, however, we need to do something. Uh, Joan has uh, good ideas about, uh, about uh, why uh, financial institutions should move and why uh, startups should have a very close look, look at, at all this. And then um, Jonathan is going to speak about privacy. Because, Amongst of course, other things, yes. Yes. So we start with Paul Navarro, who will give you, uh, brush you uh, the landscape of, uh, of mobile payments and everything that's available to you and why uh, you should pick one or another type of, uh, of solutions. Paul, please. Okay. There is a, a slide that you can... Yeah, picture. sure. Yeah. Stand up or, yeah? Yeah, that should. Please put on the slide. I will go there, yeah. So Paul Navarro is the head uh, of digital channel and innovation at Bank Sabadell. Um, You've probably heard some uh, press releases about what Bank Sabadell is doing, because it's global news today. Um, I'll let you explain what you, you do. Okay. Uh, what I'll try to do is, is have a big picture of uh, what, what's happening around when we talk about mobile payments, because I think mobile payments is, is about anything. So we'll try to help uh, uh, do a better, a better understanding of what are we talking about. So, when we talk about mobile payments, we see the, so different spaces where, where banks and uh, startups have the opportunity to, to deliver new services. For us, it's very important having the wide view from how is the customer experience really in the interaction with a bank and, and with a mobile when they're paying. So uh, just understand a little bit more. We ha we're de uh, developing and, and seeing different trends. The first one, the most important one perhaps today for the news that have been launched during the last days, is the money out uh, a stream, so how people is using money, to, uh, the mobile to, be, to pay, so all the things around wallets and how we can transform the mobile into a, a payment device, so there's a huge innovation coming here, so how we put the credit cards and all the wallet into the mobile phone. The second one, it's, and we have some examples here in the round table, it's how we transform the mobile into a money in device, so how can we use the mobile as a POS, 
And we have several examples also here, and SetPay is one of them, trying to transform the mobile into a device that allows you to take money and take money into the bank. And the third one, when there's also coming many, many innovation around there, is e-commerce and peer-to-peer -peer payments. So e-commerce, it's going to be a huge thing because uh, everything is going to go digital on, 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 on sales. And there will be a huge integration between e-commerce and digital payments and mobile. So probably all these things are going to merge all together in the future. So in the first part, in the money in part, we have seen uh, many startups, as, as he was explaining, around the world. Maybe in Europe, uh, one of the most relevant still today is iZettle from the north of Europe. And, and there are also some examples more locally here in Spain. In the wallet wars, I think everyone is around, around the wallet. Google has been one of the first to move on on, on the wallet. ISIS uh, is uh, a joint uh, force between different banks in the US. And then you have several examples around there. But for us, the most important thing here, and we'll explain a little bit uh, before uh, this presentation, is um, the most important thing is how do you integrate everything in the pocket of the customer uh, with a seamless customer experience. So it's very, we want to be very agnostic from the technology that is available in each moment and really make things very easy for the customer. So trying to uh, make very uh, a seamless experience independently of the technology that the customer has in each moment in his pocket. And the third one is e-commerce. So when PayPal, Amazon, and everyone is trying to do things around that and really you'll see many people trying to move online and digital payments to the physical space. So PayPal is trying to push the wall of digital payments to the physical space, and, and there's many competition around there. So just to share with you some things that we are doing uh, in Chupang Sabadell, and I will try. Can you move to the next slide, please? OK. So in the first stream, it, it, uh, we are working like in, in two kind of uh, innovation streams. The first one is our own solution. So the bank is developing uh, by themselves and with some partners our own solutions for mobile payments. But we are also trying to connect the bank with all the entrepreneurship ecosystems and really be uh, helping and connected with the startups that are really transforming the payments space. So on the first side, we can see in the morning solutions where the bank has his own mobile POS solution. So we have a, a device that allows us to transform a mobile phone into a POS solution. And for us, it's also very important to move the traditional POS to the mobile. So this is one of the things that we are doing. The second is money out. And uh, we just announced at the last week that we are going to launch together with MasterCard a host card emolution solution. So this will allow us to deploy wallet to our customers without any dependence of mobile operators. So we think in Spain today, it's very hard with a heterogeneous system of mobile operators to, develop, to, to deploy something that is really usable for customers, uh, trying to be connected with every mobile operator. So we are putting many money around host card simulations and really integrating the customer directly with the mobile phone and, and, and put the credit cards there without any another application from the mobile operator. So for us, this is a big, a big thing that we are going to move during the next uh, month and that we launched uh, last week. And on the third side, in e-commerce and peer-to-peer, -peer, we also launched uh, also last week a joint initiative by all the Spanish banks that is called UPay. UPay is a digital wallet for e-commerce payment that allows you to simply put your credit cards on a, on a small digital wallet over the internet. And when you go to any e-commerce site, pay with your uh, digital wallet without introducing your credit card. This is a joint venture between the main banks in Spain. So uh, it has been launched last week. And today, there are more than uh, 50,000 uh, e-commerce websites in Spain that already have the UPay uh, payment button. And we think that it's important, this uh, joint things between different banks, because at the end of the day, banks are traditionally imagining payments. So it's important for us to really do something that it's easy for the customer and that really helps the customer pay the same way independent of where they do, where they shopping. And then the other side, we think it's very important because payments are changing very fast and the ecosystem is evolving very fast to have a very tight connection with entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs really are very fast innovating and testing new things. So we have two, two uh, really important examples for us. The first one is 
we launched B Startup. B Startup is an initiative to uh, support entrepreneurs to launch uh, their business here in Spain. We are investing capital in, in startups and helping them to accelerate and to go to the market. And part of this program is focused on fintech startups. And one of them is here with us today. They set pay. And set pay is a startup that has developed a, a mobile POS solution that integrates with a, with a retail with a retail chain and they manage all the experience of the payment uh, into a mobile device. So for us, it's very important to complement our own solutions with third parties that are really speeding up innovation and helping us learn more fast how we need to do things. So this is one of the things we're doing with third parties. And on the other side, we, we have also an open, an open platform that is a, a digital payments platform where we are supporting several startups that are also doing uh, digital money things. You know that in Spain, doing digital money things is very regulated, so uh, sometimes for startups it's quite difficult to go uh, fast with that regulation. So what we are doing is opening our platform and allowing startups developing digital money solutions uh, built on the top of our platform to make things easier. So there's a big picture of things that we are doing, how the market we think is moving, and how Banco Sava is reacting around this. We think payments is gonna be a very uh, a fast innovation of Spain do, during the next years. And for us, it's very important, as, as explained before, to be very tight and very connected with the startup ecosystems to really understand how the bank should adapt to the different moves that are happening in the market. Um, one question, question Paul. Um, how, how, do you, how much do you rely on Visa and MasterCard for all these solutions? Are they indispensable, I mean, or you can do things think, without them today? Yeah, I think today uh, Visa and MasterCard are still global brands, so if you want to go global with payments and, and really be able to pay in everywhere, in every, in every country in the world, still the brand of Visa and MasterCard is very important. So uh, on, the, on the wallet side, we are partnering with MasterCard and the wallet is together with them because for international acceptance, the global brands are still uh, playing uh, an important payment to ensure that it's not really a closed loop system and it's really an open system to pay every, uh, everywhere in the world. There are more closed loop systems where probably when you were talking for, it's a, there's an example here like my taxi and more closed systems where probably when you are in the both ends of the transactions, you don't need really global acceptance because you have the customer and the, and the retail chain connected. So you can probably do a closed loop transaction there. But if you think, on how people is moving and paying around the world, there's still Visa and MasterCard playing a big role on, on ensuring that you have an open payment ecosystem. Okay. So, um, Joan, uh, in your opinion, why do you think um, financial institutions, and the one in Spain, should move uh, forward with, with, with mobile payments? Why, why should they play a, a role in this space? And why not leave it to, um, to other players that are already uh, strong, for example, on the e-commerce? Okay, as, as Paul said earlier, uh, there are a lot of uh, innovators in the, in the ecosystem. So uh, these innovators on mobile point of sale and in, in mobile payments in general uh, are gaining a lot of customers and uh, uh, revenues. So, well, uh, for financial institutions, uh, there is a threat and there is also an opportunity uh, in order to offer more services to attract uh, some customers uh, that uh, they do not have uh, with the current products. And uh, well, uh, I think the, the, the best example is uh, Square. Square was the first mobile point of, uh, of sale solution. And uh, well, uh, they have, uh, I think, 20% of the impost market in the, in the USA. So, uh, well, uh, traditional financial institutions uh, need to offer uh, this kind of services. Okay. If, if not, uh, they are going to lose uh, customers, revenues, and um, also I think uh, mobile point of solution, uh, sale solutions and uh, in general mobile payments uh, are a good platform for cross-selling other products like uh, loyalty platforms, uh, invoicing platforms, catalog uh, products. And uh, I, I think they, they, they need to have uh, a, an offer in this, in this area. So you're, you're, it's interesting because you're mentioning Square, mm -hmm. which is, a, everyone knows, I think, a US-based company. So maybe, Florian, you could elaborate a little bit on the, 
how easy it is for Square, for example, to come into Europe, or how uh, um, is there a need for adaptation when it comes to payment? Uh, Paul mentioned the strong regulation issue. So what's your take on that? You've yeah. worked on uh, MyTaxi. You've uh, uh, found a way to, to make them uh, accept payments. Um, as you already please. mentioned, as you already mentioned uh, payment services is a regulated area. So um, this doesn't make it very easy as a market entrance for anyone. So either if you, uh, for US-based companies coming to, the Euro to, to Europe or uh, other European country, uh, European startups who want to uh, operate on the, uh, on the payment service uh, area. So in general, it's a regulated area, which means in general, you will need a, a, a according license, either a full banking license, which gives you full flexibility, or at the latest, um, at least a, a payment service provider license. The good, the good news behind it is that um, the, the payment service or the, the regulation around payment services is fully harmonized in Europe since uh, some years ago, um, which the payment service direct, uh, directive, the PSD, um, fully harmonized it. Uh, also from, from a legal point of view regarding the relation between the customers and the payment service provider on the one hand, but also on the regulatory side. Um, so that the, the conditions when you need a license and how to uh, get a license are equal in, in each European country on the one hand. And the second good news is if you have a European banking license from any European country, um, there's this so-called European passport, which means with a banking license or a payment service provider license from one European country, you can operate in the whole uh, European Union. So if you come to Europe from the US, for example, um, and you need a banking or a payment service provider license here, you can uh, obtain it from one uh, European country and operate it in the whole of Europe. So this is, um, this is the good news. The bad news is that even though from the words the, the laws and the regulatory laws are equal in each European country, um, the different regulatory authorities, which are national regulatory authorities, um, interpret these words differently, so <laughs> um, it doesn't make it easier. There's some countries where the regulators are more easy, like Luxembourg, for example, and there are other countries, like Germany, for example, which are very strict, and the, 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 they see a wide, uh, wide framework where they have to um, apply for a license. Okay, so so here we have uh, entrepreneurs, right? Um, so say I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur, I have an, an idea of a fantastic app, and I want to get money in my app. Of course, I want to, 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 to get money for that. What should I do? What should I do? I mean, it's, it seems like a, it's a huge mountain to overcome, and a, a, a huge job. Yeah. You imagine piles of paperwork, and uh, so what's, what's the, 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 the fa is there a fast track to be able to, 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 um, they, to get cash in, I would say, in your app? Yeah. So first, as you just said, there's a difference, and then on Paul, you said it as well, there's a difference between cash in and cash out. Um, you, have to, you have to first think what you want to do with your mobile payment, because what is mobile payment? Is it just uh, the authorization at the point of sale, contactless or mobile, or is it just uh, the collection of the money? And um, you have to think, are you an origin, an origin payment service provider? So do you want to offer your payment services to, to third parties, to other people? So this is your service you're bringing? Or is the payment service just an add-on to your own services? So is it that you, um, that you just want to collect the money for you, the services you just offer to, to the customers? So, because this is also legally totally different, because if you're just collecting the, your own money, you won't need a license. But if if uh, you collect the money for others or transfer it to 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 others who pr uh, provided the services, then you're in the regulated area. So um, there might be a fast track, which was, for example, um, I, I'm allowed to say it is my taxi, because we just found a very very small way around regulation. Uh, it was also a lucky shot, lucky shot. I don't know if the German regulator would still uh, accept it. Um, and the, it, it's, it's good because regulation is, costs some money. It takes some time. The regulators are quite slow. So if you apply for a license, it takes its time. You need a lot of, lot of paperwork. And it's regular reporting, certainly. 
you need some uh, capital basis, um, so some um, some some capital in the company certainly because you you're just moving other people's money. So um, it's clear that you've got to be a strong and solid financial basis. Um, there's a regulator which regularly looks into your company. So this is the downturn. Um, the upside of the regulation is you're flexible because if you've got a found a way around regulation, it's normally a fixed way and you're lucky if you can walk down this way, you're never really safe, even especially because uh, laws can change and they will change, um, come to this later on. Um, and um, so if you've got a, a license yourself, um, you're flexible, you can do whatever you want because you just do what, what is ever necessary and you want to do and you can make money for it because you can offer these services to other people and you get paid for it. So or okay. on there's, a, on there's an intermediary way, which will, Paul will be happy to hear it, or you're looking for a partner, uh, a banking partner who's got a license, who lends his license to you. You just bring technical services and all regulatory um, relevant services are provided by the bank. And this is quite complex to, from, from, a, from a legal point of view to construct, but it's, it's, it's easy to be done and there are regularly corporations between banks. Banks often offer wide label solutions to, to, offer, uh, to, to others. Um, and if you've got a flexible and, and, and forward-thinking banking partner, it could really help you. Certainly this banking partner will take its share, but um, will help around. And also it could be a mixture between uh, the strategies. You apply for a license on the long term, but in the, on the short term, on the medium term, you're going with a, with a banking partner. And if you're grown up, you might work on your own license. So it could be, could be a kickstart of the banking mm -hmm. license. Basically you're saying the fast track to get the money in is to take a bank as a partner. Because he's got a license and Everything. you just agree, agree uh, and adopt a model with the bank, work it out together, and then it's just the paperwork with the bank. It takes long enough, but it's always quicker than uh, working with a regulator. So, so you, you, okay, it's, it's very clear, thank you. Um, so that's to process the money. How about privacy issues now? I mean, is there other regulations about, okay, I'm, you know, big data is the, is the next big thing, right? So if I can get my users to sign up into my system, my app, and put all their credentials in my app, and then they just click a button to pay every time they use my app, then I can monitor uh, what they're doing and get some uh, data. And uh, how, how, is, how is it working with uh, the rules and regulations in, uh, in Europe? So the regulations in Europe around data protection, there is no or well, there's just few data protection on specifically on, on payment services. The problem around data protection laws in the whole of Europe and whole of the world is that just they have to catch all kinds of data we are processing in, in the entire world. So um, there is certainly there are strict strict regulations, um, often set up by the financial institutions themselves, or if you work together with Visa, Mastercard, with these big credit card organizations, for example, they've got their own standards. They are worldwide standards. They use in the, U the U.S. and Europe. They are um, on, on, on data protection, on, on security uh, issues. Um, so and do I need to keep the private data, for example, in Europe, or can it be a company based in Jamaica that's collecting all my data? I mean, is, are there regulations on that? There are no regulations around that, but if, you, if the data travels outside the European Union, um, then you have to um, have special agreements with these, with these providers who store the da data outside Europe. Um, the so-called, um, there's standard clauses also published by the European Union. If you use these contractual clauses, then um, you have to, you have to, to guarantee that the, 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 the level of protection, also of legal protection, is the same as inside Europe. So and if it's not uh, a safe country from a European point of view, uh, with, with equal uh, level of data protection laws, then you have to individually agree with the provider outside Europe, uh, Europe that he, he commits to, to keep the same levels as, as they are um, valid in, in Europe. So that's rather little protection, I would say, on the um, usage of the of private data. Yeah. The, there is little protection. I mean, it's not, it's not, um, you're not guaranteed by, by, by any government that your data would not be uh, used to do some data mining and this type of stuff. No, it's, it's always you who have, uh, you're always the provider or the, the, the one storing and processing the, the data who's always reliable towards the customers to, to, um, to keep the data protection and keep it, keep it safe. 
Um, and it's, up, it's, it's really up to the uh, it's to the user yeah. to be aware of what's kind of It's up to the user, but also to, to the one processing. So in, in our case, it's the adopt the company um, providing the services. What do you have to say about that, Jonathan? Uh, I think that privacy in Europe is taken more seriously than in the United States. And I would also like to say that there are only three types of company in the world. There are companies that write the rules. There are companies that follow the rules. And then there are the losers. And we need to rewrite the rules in privacy. So that's what we've done in Dinubi. We've created a series of algorithms where the ownership of the data no longer belongs to the service provider. It belongs to the user. Because you are the person that should control your identity and your purchase preferences. So we have um, invested a lot of time and uh, R&D in developing privacy algorithms in the cloud, where we think we are pioneering the digital era in terms of privacy. And uh, this should make it easier to accept payments. We are a payment network. So we often hear about the Gang of Five, um, which I know Laurent mentions on his website as being the Google, Amazon, etc. I talk about another gang, a real gang of five. It's called Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Diners, and Discover. And by the way, why is there no payments network in Europe? That's the problem that we are solving. So every year in Europe, 25 million, uh, sorry, 25 billion euros are lost at the point of sale because of these incumbent legacy players with historic systems. Interestingly, if I asked you all to open your wallet, you have something in it uh, made out of plastic that came out at exactly the same time as those records, those LP records. You remember those, right? Your grandfather's record player? I love vinyl. Yeah. <laughs> they're, actually, they're collector's items. Brilliant if you still have them. So. In the music industry, let's make a parallel with payments and then I'll get back to fully round off your question. We started out with LP vinyl records uh, and the credit card came out, diners, mid 50s, New York, etc. cetera. Uh, vinyl then went to cassettes uh, and the music industry progressed from cassettes, as we all know and loved in the 70s and 80s, into DVDs. And from DVDs, we went to MP3s. And from MP3s, we're now in the cloud. The credit card industry still has plastic. Um, and they still have the same business model that was invented 50 years ago. So we are reinventing this for digital societies. We live in a digital era. All of our data is being tracked. Every time you turn on a, um, some kind of a device, uh, somebody is mining your data. and we have to put controls in place where that data belongs to you, not to the service provider. Uh, so if we can bring on the video, we have a short uh, definition, uh, which uh, I would like to share with all of you. Video, por favor. What you're proposing is a new way of payments, it's a new payment scheme, which is closed loop then? Uh, it's closed loop because that's the safest way to protect data. But do you have a, an infrastructure for um, 
to acquire the transaction from a merchant point of view? Or? Yeah, so luckily in Europe, because we're operating in SEPA, so 33 European countries, uh, we have uh, two key strategic agreements. Uh, one is with Ingenico, and uh, we're fully vertically integrated with Ingenico in all of their uh, data phones. So that covers 80% of the points of sale in Europe. The second thing is uh, beginning in Spain, uh, let's say the, uh, the payments processing highway is uh, a market leading company, Informatica El Corte Inglés, or YECISA as it's called here, and uh, they are strategic partners of ours, so we have fully integrated with them. So we are now in a position to go to retailers and say uh, we have uh, access to 80% of the market and the merchant does not need to be trapped in that commission scheme and they do not need to change any of their equipment because if somebody does come with um, a historic um, form of payment, it can be accepted in the same device and if they come with a digital form of payment like Dinubi, then it can be accepted in the same device because we have already been deployed in that, uh, in that unit. Could that work with, uh, with uh, SetPay? Yes. I'm, I'm actually hoping when we finish this to uh, have good. a, a so coffee with Swan and uh, discuss that. <laughs> I just prepared the contracts. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Paul, what do you and think about this? The license. <laughs> <laughs> so you, but you have a bank in the background? Or has yes, we have a European uh, money license uh, partnership. Okay. Uh, which is, as you were mentioning, is the fast track to, to get into this. Uh, we actually, interestingly on this point, we're a spin-out of MIT, so we started in the United States, and uh, the primary reason for transferring our business uh, from the US to Europe was actually the difficulty in money licensing in the United States. Yep. Uh, and recently there was news uh, last year about Square, which was mentioned. Uh, Square was recently fined in the state of Florida, for not having a license from Florida, because the way it works in the US is it's state by state. Uh, so for once in Europe, we've actually got things right. Would you like uh, to add something to... I, uh, want to yeah? I, I want to have a short look into the future, not, not only technique-wise, but also legal-wise. Um, just, just in general, I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's the next big thing or the next big market which will be completely mixed up I think because we've got these traditional huge players like Visa Mastercard, the banks, the telcos which really want to get into it and small creative startups who want to disrupt the whole market um, and not only um, and also the European Commission has, has, has seen that um, as they want to even push the, the competition on this market uh, further um, and they just uh, in the middle of last year, they, um, they published a new draft of a second payment service directive, um, just uh, yeah, adding to the, to the existing new regulations and just some minor changes, uh, some new regulations, which, for example, is the, the uh, they call the TPPs, third-party payment um, uh, providers, which are just um, like in, like, uh, in, in as a thought, uh, in, in Germany or ideal in the Netherlands, I think they're called um, Trustly and Scandinavia, which just lead you, to, um, which just lead you to the, your home bank, to your online banking that they are regulated newly, and which is really interesting for the consumers, but also for the startups or all the players in the market. They reduce or they fixed um, the, the the interchange fees, which is the fee paying one bank to the other uh, for credit card payments. Um, so they fixed it for debit cards to 0.3% and for credit cards 0.2%, which is really, really low. Um, uh, Three-party schemes like American Express and Dana's Club are outside it, but um, the European Commission tries to keep down the prices because if the interchange is really low, um, also the, uh, the, the merchants will have pay lower, lower fees. And they want to really uh, also push alternative payment methods because credit card is is still in the in the in e-commerce and mobile commerce very very common, but not many or just the share of, of the population in Europe having credit cards is quite low. Um, they it's not will not be allowed to make surcharge for for um, for credit card payments, which is common. If you book a flight, you always pay up to 10, 12 euros just payment just because you pay with credit card and there's no other mean of payment because you have to pay by credit card. 
Um, so th um, this will be forbidden in the future. So it's only a draft by the European Commission. It's not law yet, but it shows the direction they want to really push the competition how further. Far from, how far from now is this? Uh, don't ask me that, because um, it depends on, uh, on, on, on how much time, how hard the discussion will be around it. Certainly the banks and the, 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 the credit card organizations will not be happy, but probably there will only be a discussion about the amount of interchange, for example. Yeah, and I think it probably it will come. There? It will be a, a strong, tough fight because the credit cards uh, will lose market shares. Um, but this could be the... the, the it could be a, a, a real kick for startups or other yeah, yeah. competing payment uh, services. Actually, I, was, uh, I had this discussion in uh, Brussels uh, a few weeks ago at the European Commission, mm -hmm. and obviously now we have elections coming up in Europe, so that's going to uh, put this proposal on ice for uh, several months, I would think, until the final configuration of the European Parliament settles down and it then can be picked up again. But I think we're looking at at least a two-year framework and then I think the other issue is, as uh, in Europe, should we legislate or should we innovate? Personally, I think that innovation should come before legislation. Uh, so um, finally, we should have a good combination of both. But I think it's going to be at least two years before that can become. Is, is, uh, is there a, a country that's, more, uh, that's best for this kind of uh, innovation, I would say, in Europe? In your opinion. Actually, I think uh, Spain is a great place to start because the banks here have a very advanced level of technology in, in general terms, and uh, the banking system here is very efficient. Uh, we also have some important uh, carriers that are quite dynamic uh, with a strong global presence, uh, and so there's a lot of R&D in that, in that sense. And then I think... Um, one of the other reasons why we were attracted to, to this market is uh, Barcelona is one of the most visited cities in Europe. So it is a fantastic showcase for uh, technology that can be put in at, uh, let's say, a fashion retailer. And if it works at a fashion retailer here, that retailer can then take it to stores in London, Paris, etc. Um, and it spreads from there. So I think probably you would find in, in Holland a uh, small pockets of innovation, parts of Germany, you would find, I think um, there, there, are, there is no one particular innovation cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're seeing is that there are small clusters around different, uh, different parts of Europe. Also in, in Eastern Europe, Lithuania, for example, lots of exciting things going on there. And, and I think just to add a little uh, more information, <clears throat> it's a clearer sign that the innovation is coming from these new players like You've been talking about Square. Visa Inc. is one of the main shareholders of Square. And MasterCard also is one of the main shareholders of IZ. Also, it's clear that payment processors are, are taking a position on this business. And it's clearly that many innovation will come from using technology to really change customer behavior. So I have to, uh, to put an end to this round table. Uh, time's up. Thank you very much. Uh, as you can see, I don't know if we can see the, 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 the slide that's uh, here. Uh, it's too late. OK. It's quite complex. Uh, I hope we were able to put a little bit of order uh, in this complexity. I mean, it's short. If you have a question, of course, Florian is there. He's <laughs> making a living <laughs> out, of, yeah, <laughs> out of this. So it's, uh, it's uh, good luck for your, uh, for your startups. And uh, please don't hesitate to, uh, to call on us, whether it's for uh, services with Bank Sabadell uh, or services with uh, Florian. <laughs> Thank and uh, Jonathan, thank you very much. <laughs> thank, you very much. thank you. Thank you very much.